Hi everyone, thanks for watching today's video. Today I'm going to talk about the difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Try and explain it in a very simple language because there is a fair bit of confusion between the two types of diabetes. In my last video, we spoke about blood sugar or blood glucose, which means one and the same thing. Where it comes from and what actually happens in diabetes. So to quickly recap, we eat different types of foods. The foods contain carbohydrates, fats, proteins, which are the main fuel source or energy source in our body. If we just focus on the carbohydrates, the main carbohydrate we eat is starch. Starch is contained in many different types of foods like bread, rice, pasta, etc., etc. When we eat starch, starch is a very big molecule and this big piece of starch or carbohydrate cannot be absorbed in our body from the digestive system, which is the gut, into our bloodstream. So to break it down into smaller pieces, the gut enzymes, so there are certain enzymes produced from our stomach, from our intestine, from our liver, pancreas, etc. They break the starch down into very simple or small molecules. And one of them is a simple sugar called glucose. Glucose is small enough to be carried from our intestine into our bloodstream. So it gets absorbed from the digestive system, from our gut into our blood. Blood acts like a conveyor belt or like a transport system of our body, which takes the glucose to different organs of our body. So it will take it to the brain, to the lungs, to the heart, to the kidneys, liver, our legs, our arms, everywhere in the body. And that is the main cycle of glucose. Now, the next step is when the blood glucose gets to our tissues. So I have drawn a blood vessel here, which is the red tube over here, in which I have drawn glucose. These green spots are glucose molecules. I've drawn a line in between. So on this side, there is insulin, which is working. And on this side, there is no insulin. So either the insulin is not working properly or there is no insulin at all. Now, as I discussed in my previous video, when we eat food and the blood glucose goes up, the pancreas will secrete more insulin and that in insulin will push the blood glucose into our cells. So these are the cells in different parts of our body. So this could be the brain or our heart or our lungs or our kidneys or anywhere in the body. Without the blood glucose coming into the cells, our cells cannot function normally. So those organs cannot function normally because glucose is the main energy source or fuel source. Like we have fuel in the car, glucose is the main fuel in our body to make our body work. And the thing that pushes the glucose from our blood into our cells or which carries the uh, glucose from our blood into the cells is insulin, which is produced by our pancreas gland. If you look on the other side of the picture where I have put a large, drawn a line in between, on this side there is insulin, so it pushing the glucose into the cells. On this side, there is no insulin. And we come to it in a minute why there is no insulin. That insulin is not working onto the blood glucose, so there is more glucose in the blood over here. You can see there are lots more green spots on this side and there is no glucose going into the cells. So these cells cannot function normally. Now, this is the main problem in diabetes, that there is not either not enough insulin or not effective insulin to push the blood glucose into our cells. Until here, until this point, both type 1 and type 2 diabetes are the same. Exactly the same thing happening in both. Glucose is not going from our blood vessels into our cells. It's collecting into our blood vessels, hence the blood glucose level is very high. Now you might ask that what is the harm of having more glucose in our blood? There are two harms. Number one, because the glucose is not coming into our cells, our cells cannot function normally. As I said earlier, glucose is the fuel in our body. There is no fuel going into the machinery, the machinery will stop working. Number two, high blood glucose, which is very, very high and stays high for a long period of time and we can't control it, which happens in diabetes, 
that high blood glucose is going to damage our tissues, it's going to damage our blood vessels, it's going to damage our heart, it's going to damage our brain, it's going to damage our kidneys, it's going to damage our skin, and etc. etc. So it is quite important to control the blood glucose. So what are the symptoms of type 1 and type 2 diabetes? The symptoms are nearly the same. Patients feel very thirsty, they feel very hungry, despite eating a lot, they still continue to lose weight. They pass a lot of urine, so they're constantly every hour going to pass urine. It's a very watery urine as well. They start getting blurred vision. So how do one differentiate from the symptoms alone, whether it's type 1 or type 2 diabetes? The main difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes with the symptoms is the type 1 diabetes symptoms start very quickly they come suddenly whereas type 2 diabetes symptoms can happen over weeks or months or even longer so what is the second difference in type 1 and type 2 diabetes the second difference is in type 1 diabetes there is no insulin so insulin are drawn over there so there is no insulin at all in type 1 diabetes so the glucose from the blood vessels can't go into the cells in type 2 diabetes the problem is a bit different either the insulin is very little or the insulin is not working normally so insulin is present but it is not working insulin so again the blood sugar or glucose cannot come into the cells and since the blood glucose is not coming into the cells, the blood glucose level keeps going up and up and up. And that will cause damage to our tissues, as I explained earlier, if it's not treated. The third difference is what causes type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is autoimmune, which means our own defense mechanism in our body starts attacking our, the cells in our pancreas called the beta cells. These beta cells produce insulin. When they are destroyed, then no insulin is produced and hence patients become diabetic. Happens very quickly, hence the symptoms happen very, very quickly. In type 2 diabetes, there are certain risk factors. Nobody knows what causes type 2 diabetes, but they are, it is more common in people from Southeast Asia, certain African uh, places, very common in people who are obese, very common with people who have poor lifestyle like eating junk food, smoking, drinking, etc, etc. Hence, the treatment of both diseases is different. Controlling the lifestyle in type 2 diabetes is very, very important as compared to type 1 diabetes. It is important in type 1 as well, otherwise people have a high risk of complications like heart attacks, strokes, etc. But it is more important in type 2 diabetes. Can any of them be reversed or completely cured answer is in type 1 no because there is no insulin hence the patient has to be given insulin in one way or the other to control their blood sugar otherwise damage will happen so the main treatment in type 1 diabetes is insulin in type 2 diabetes we can't change our ethnic origin so those risk factors cannot be changed however poor lifestyle can be changed eating healthy, eating regular, eating a balanced diet is very important. Obesity can be changed by exercise, by surgery, etc. The last difference between the two types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2, is how they're treated. Type 1 diabetes almost always require insulin treatment because there is no insulin in our body coming from the pancreas, so insulin has to be given. And the diet control is far more important in these patients. They have to count their calories, they count their carbohydrates because that dictates how much insulin they are going to give themselves. It happens earlier on in life as well. So it happens in children, it happens in young adults. It happens usually under the age of 40. Type 2 diabetes usually happens later on in life. Lifestyle change is very important. So eating healthy, eating a balanced diet, losing weight, most of these patients can be controlled with medications which are given by tablets or injections and the main purpose of these tablets and injections is to help push the glucose from our blood into our cells and that's how they are controlled.
insulin is required in a small percent of patients in which there is not enough insulin being produced by the pancreas. I hope after this video you understand the differences between type 1 and type 2 diabetes. If you like this video then please give us a thumbs up and remember to subscribe. Thanks for watching.